seated way up in the family circle at the Metropolitan Opera, and I was looking down at two round people in costumes from a different era, a very distant era. They must have been a mile away, but I could hear them loud and clear. What were they singing about, I asked my mother. No sir titles back in 1966. Eternal love, she whispered, read your program. <laughs> uh, I remembered being surprised to the extent I had any deeper understanding of, of love in my teens. It seemed that love was reserved for beautiful people, for fleet-footed quarterbacks, thin blonde oh, prom queens. <laughs> I just choke at the idea. <laughs> and, um, and movie stars. Zinka Milanoff and Richard Tucker were neither young nor fair. And yet, when they embraced, the intensity of their duet transcended the reality of their appearance. Uh, by the time they climbed toward the guillotine, I was enslaved. Now, years later, when I was slightly more sophisticated and writing for the Wall Street Journal, I saw another performance with different singers of Andrea Chenier, and I was happy and to describe them as finishing their last duet, tete a tete. Anyway, Giordano's Andrea Chenier really opened the doors uh, to another world for me. Um, our house in Valley Cottage, New York, which is a suburb of a suburb called <laughs> Nyack, um, was small, it was crowded, cramped, stuffed with Salvation Army furniture and a few boxes of souvenirs and photo albums from a life my parents had left behind in Germany and Latvia. During the Second World War, my mother had migrated from Riga to Berlin, where she, multilingual, uh, worked as a translator in the offices of the dumb and nasty foreign minister Joachim von Ribbentrop who tormented his staff by brewing real coffee for himself and never sharing. My father, an officer in the Wehrmacht, was a chauffeur assigned to another war criminal, Field Marshal Wilhelm Keitel, later executed at Nuremberg, just like Ribbentrop, um, and before being dispatched to Russia as a tank commander. In one of the boxes I opened after his death, I found those tiny black and white photographs that had little frilly edges. And they were documents of his long and increasingly dismal journey from Poland into the Soviet Union. He ground to a halt outside Stalingrad, where most of his comrades in the Sixth Army froze to death, and where the war was basically lost two years before Hitler put a bullet through his head in April. 1945. In fact, April 20th was his birthday. Uh, nobody talked much in my house. I was the only child of parents who married rather late, and they were brought together by the deaths of partners they mourned, and they had little in common. My father raised mute creatures like fish and turtles. My educated mother played opera highlights on the one handsome piece uh, we own, which was a po Polish Grundig record player. So you lifted the top, and she soon blemished it with cigarette burns. Um, at the opera, everything was different. It was grandly scaled. And I was swept into a world of mystery and beauty very different from my kind of blue collar life in suburbia. And I ended up spending about as much time as I could in the dark. Weekends were great. We could bus in, my mother allowed that, and the Met played matinees and evenings on Saturdays, and the City Opera performed twice on Sunday. That was great. Instead of ending up working for the phone company or pet store, I got ambitious, and now look back on a satisfying career in arts journalism at the Wall Street Journal and other publications. I wrote an opera libretto that you heard about, and I'm now finishing Hitler's Summer Seasons backstage with the Führer. 
Yes, you know where this is leading. Adolf also loved sitting in the dark. He especially loved the epic works of Richard Wagner. Otto Dietrich, his flabbergasted press representative, thought he may have seen Die Meistersinger, the Master Singers of Nuremberg, a um, hundred times. That opera, with all its many Meistersingers, is six hours long once you include two intermissions. The Führer spent at least a week every summer at the Bayreuth Festival, where any composer but Wagner is verboten. That goes till today as well. He was extremely knowledgeable and knew the operas by heart, especially Götterdämmerung, the last of the four opera ring cycle, which ends with the world destroyed by fire. After defeating France in the summer of 1940, Hitler immediately left for Bayreuth. He took a train from France to see Twilight of the Gods. He never attended another opera, not there, not anywhere. Now that the world was his stage and his to burn, Hitler had no need for little Bayreuth or any other operatic substitute. It's disturbing to contemplate, but his dreaming in the dark made me and my own dreams possible. Mm -hmm. 